Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel once again. It's fantastic to have you guys all here. So today I wanted to go over a few things that I've gotten a lot of comments on and a lot of people asking me and that question is what does it cost to actually start melting metal at home? So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. That's what I'm going to be doing and I'm going to give you a breakdown of exactly what I spend and how much it costs to do what I do. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to need is a furnace. No, this is not a forge. A forge is different. This is a forge. Totally different than a furnace. This is used for heating up steel, hammering it, pounding it, shaping it to what you need. A furnace is for actually melting the metal itself. So don't be mistaken by the two different ones. Furnace, yes. So for a furnace, you can use either a propane one that this is hooked up to, this is a devil forge, and the cost of this can vary anywhere from $250 all the way up to a few thousand, depending on which model you buy. However, you can make your own from a simple propane tank, which is right here, which was the original one that I was using, and it's just basically the same thing, just homemade. The concept is exactly the same though, this is just lined with kaol and then some refractory cement put on top of it just to seal it up. However, you can see mine's cracking up here at the top. And I'll need to redo that soon, but not a big deal to refix this. It's only gonna cost about $15. So that's the first way to do it. This would be the way I would recommend it, unless you're only melting a little bit of let's say silver or zinc or aluminum and you don't need something this size, that's where I would go over to the electric one, which is this guy right here. The one thing I like about this, it's, it's small, it's compact, and it's temperature controlled, which is one really nice feature that I like, that you can't really control the temperature in a propane one because you really don't know, unless you have a pyrometer or something like that, and you're testing out what it actually puts out on heat-wise. You're not really sure. So if you just need a little bit, you, you can fit enough metal in here without spending a whole lot of money, I guess. So for the sake of this video, I'm just going to assume you wanna be using a propane one. So we're gonna give the cost of actual that specific one and what you'll need for this. So the next thing you're going to need is obviously something to melt your metal in. This is a crucible, this is a number eight. I got this one off of Amazon, and I think the cost was probably about 22 to $23, somewhere around there. Obviously this one I need to clean out because it's still got some, some bronze left in it, but not a big deal. Usually it's pretty easy to peel out. But these have lasted me. I have about five of them. And I'll use one for each different metal that I melt. So one I'll use for copper, one I use for aluminum, one I use for brass, blah, 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 and so forth. So that way I'm not mixing alloys, I'm not doing anything like that. So I don't have to keep buying them, but this will last a good year probably. I've had this one for about a year and it's still going strong. There's not really any cracks, it's, it's still solid. So it's good. So that's the next thing you're gonna need. So once you have the furnace and once you have the crucible, what else do you need? Metal, obviously. You're not gonna be melting anything if you don't have a source of metal. Now you can use cans, you can use old car parts, you can use basically anything you can find. So there you go, you obviously need metal to melt to be able to do this. Okay, so you have the metal, you have the furnace, you have the crucible, what else do you need? Well, you need something to pour the metal into, like a mold. Now, I was selling these. I am no longer selling these because my supplier just does not have the time to make them. However, you don't need something this fancy. You can use just one of these graphite molds that are available on my website. And yeah, basically anything you can pour the metal into. You can use sand, you can use a mold. There's a ton of different things. Let me show you another one. Here is a much smaller cast iron mold that I picked up. I have about five or six of these but I really don't like using them. 
I, I'm really not a big fan of cast iron, but you can pick one of these up at most places, most shops for about maybe $12. But again, I'll put a link down in the description and it'll probably pop up somewhere up here as I'm editing to give you an exact price. Moving on, okay, obviously you need some way to be able to lift out the crucible from the furnace and pour it. This was my original design that I used and it still works perfectly fine. As you can see, it's just made out of some aluminum bar stock that I got at Home Depot. I don't even know. I don't see the price on it, but I wanna say, I mean, to make these, I really didn't need to weld anything. I just used some screws, drilled a hole, bent the bar, and that was it. It works just fine. I'm not a huge fan of them anymore. Once I made my new ones out of bronze, which are these, they work much better if you ask me. And I've had a lot of people say, oh, well, aren't those going to melt if you're melting copper? The answer is no, they, they're not going to melt. Why? Because for these to melt, the liquid metal would have to be on the outside of the crucible. And by the time you actually lift it out, it's already cooled by probably about 150 degrees on the outside of that crucible. So there's no way for these to possibly melt, even if I held them on there all day. But it gets hot, so you don't wanna do that. So yeah. But to make a pair like these probably cost me about $15. The lifting tongs that you see right here, these again were just made from some stock steel bars that I got at Home Depot. And I probably put these together for about another $20. So what else do you need? One other thing that you're definitely going to need is a pair of gloves. You can pick up any of these welding gloves I got these at Harbor Freight. I think they were, I don't know, $8 a pair. So I go through quite a bit of these, as you can see. The fingers get burnt, and then I gotta throw them out and grab a new pair. But they're cheap, but they do the job, and I guarantee you're gonna wanna use them, because if you're not, you will have blisters all over your fingers if you don't burn yourself to death. Two other things you will need, some kind of stir rod or something to kind of just mix some of the metal in or push it down or poke it through. And you also need something to skim off your, the slag or dross with. And this is just a spoon. You can pick it up at, I don't know, Walgreens for $2.99. So pretty cheap. Again, this is just a big long screw from Home Depot that I picked up for, I don't know, 99 cents. So definitely gonna need those. You're also gonna need propane, obviously. Otherwise, you won't be melting anything without it. These tanks are, I think, $19.99 every time I get one, and I just refill them each time. I got about eight tanks laying around, and I usually fill them all up at once, and that'll get me through about six months before I ever have to go buy more again. But each one, I would say I would get about, if I'm just melting aluminum, maybe 12 to 15 melts out of each one. So think of it like using a gas grill. If you turn your heat up all the way high on your propane grill, how many uses do you get out of it for each steak you're cooking? So you have it on for half an hour. That's about what this equals to when I'm melting. So yeah, I don't go through a lot. It probably cost me about $1.50, maybe $2 for each melt that I do. So that is basically everything you're going to need if you want to get started. You're obviously going to need the furnace. Either one of those will work just fine. And the cost of this one is about $400, let's say, give or take. But I'll put a link in the description. But if you make your own, you could make your own homemade version with a propane tank, cut off the lid, line it with some K-O-L and some refractory, cut a hole in the bottom, buy the hose and buy the burner and put it all together. And you're probably looking at about $100. You'll also need a crucible. You're looking at about $25 for that. You'll need some tongs. If you make your own, uh, about $20 per pair. You'll need a spoon, 
stir stick or something to kind of just move the metal around with. And you'll need something to pour it into right down there. You'll need a mold of some sort, which you can pick up for about $10, or you can just use an old muffin pan. Make sure it's steel. If it's aluminum, you're just gonna melt it. So make sure it's steel or cast iron, and you can pick one of those up for about 10 bucks. Now, if you wanna start getting into more advanced things and you wanna start sand casting, obviously you're gonna to need to make a flask, which is this right here. And I've put out a video on how to make your own, and I'll put a link up in the description right up there on how you can make your own and to make your own depending on what kind of wood you buy. Typically will be about $15. I use maple, so it's a little bit more expensive, but it's a harder wood. And as you can see, I've burned this, this one quite a bit. So buy a good wood. Also, if you're doing sand casting, you'll obviously need sand. The sand I'm using is Petrobond. Now this stuff can get expensive. This is roughly around $2 a, a pound, I would say, that I typically pay for it. I have here about 150 pounds. So this could get expensive underneath. So that one down there, that one is homemade green sand. And that is actually pretty cheap to make. You could mix up 100 pounds for probably about $35 if you wanted to yourself. But you have to buy the silica sand, you have to buy the bentonite clay, and then you gotta mix it with water. And the problem with that is, is that it dries out, so if you're not using it right away, you're gonna have to get it wet again and, and keep on doing that. And to me, that's just a hassle. I'd rather just buy the Petrobond and it's oil-based sand. That way it doesn't dry out. It'll pretty much last forever. Some of the molds I've made, I've let them sit for three or four days before I even got around to casting it just because I got lazy. So yeah, I would go with the Petrobond over the green sand, but for a budget, Green sand will get you by just fine. Okay, so there you guys have it. I hope that was helpful. In order to get started melting, you will need your furnace, you will need propane, you will need gloves, you will need a crucible, you will need a mold to pour the metal into, you'll need tongs, and that's basically about it to get started. I'll put a full cost down in the description of what you will need. And if there's something you'd like me to cover more on, whether it be sand casting, whether it be the 3D printing side of it, whether it be investment casting or things like that, leave me a comment, let me know, and I'll try and shoot a video and do that and kind of break it down a little bit more. But in order to get started, those are the essential things that you will need that if you skip out on one of them, you're only hurting yourself and it could be dangerous. So thank you guys for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next one.